Okay, good morning to everybody. Okay, today we want we want to learn about the trigonometry function. First, look at the first diagram here. That means uh, a positive angle is an angle measured in the anti-clockwise directions from the positive x axis. For example, look at the example given to you. That means if the uh, angle is positive 60 degrees, so that means the movement for angle is anti-clockwise. Okay, the second one is a negative angle. A negative angle is an angle measured in the clockwise direction from the positive x axis. The example I give to you is a negative 60 degrees, so that means it's a clockwise direction. There are four quadrants in the Cartesian plane. So the quadrant 1, that means the angle is a line between the 0 to 90 degrees. Quadrant 2 is the angle line between 90 to 180. And the third quadrant, the angle is a line between 180 to 270. And uh, quadrant 4, the angle is line between 270 and 360. Okay, I would like to give you a few examples huh, for this uh, sketch the angle for each of the following angles in separate Cartesian plan. Okay, look at the example one. Eh? Example one uh, is given uh, 520 degrees. Okay, so first thing we look at the 520 degrees is more than 360. That means we know that uh, if 360 is a go one round. So that means uh, if you 520 minus 360, we get 160 degrees. So the 160 degrees is lying on the second quadrant. So that means when you sketch the angles on the Cartesian plan, that means you must draw the angles is a anti-clockwise directions. Okay, example two is given is 780 degrees here. Okay, 780, if minus 360, we get the 420 degrees. So it's already one round. And then minus another 360, we get 60 degrees. So for 780 degrees, we have a two round. The direction must be two round for the, on the Cartesian plane. So because the angle is positive, so we draw the anticlockwise, we draw two round on the Cartesian plane. And the last is a look at the angle is a 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is lying on the first quadrant. So that means 780 degrees is an angle lies on the first quadrant. Okay, for example 3, it's a 7 over 2 pi radian. Okay, this question we have a pi here. So we have to change from the pi radian to become degrees here. So you have learned about this one is 7 over 2 pi radian. We multiply with 180 over pi. So we get 630 degrees. Okay, again 660 degrees. If a minus 360, we get 270 degrees. So that means one round on the Cartesian plan. Okay, so the angle when you move or the direction uh, on the Cartesian plan is a uh, until 270 degrees is lying on the third quadrant. So in conclusion, we can say that 7 over 2 pi radian is an angle lies on the third quadrant. Okay, for example 4, the angle given is a negative 135 degrees. Okay, negative 135 means the movement for the angles is a clockwise direction. So, negative 130 degrees is an angle lies on the third quadrant. Okay, example 5. The angle given is a negative 8 over 3 pi radian. So, again, the negative 8 over 3 pi radian will to change to degrees. So, we have to multiply with the 180 degrees over pi. So, we get the negative 480 degrees. So negative 480 degrees, again, the angle should be
clockwise direction. So when clockwise direction one round, after one round, that means the negative 8 over pi radian will lie on the third quadrant. That means uh, negative 8 over pi or negative 480 degrees is lying on the third quadrant. Okay, there are four quadrants in the Cartesian plan. The first quadrant, that means all the angles, the sine theta, cos theta, tangent theta, all are positive. For quadrant two, only sine theta is positive. The rest like tangent or cos are negative in the quadrant two. For quadrant three, only the angle tangent theta is positive. The sine theta and cos theta in the quadrant three are negative value. For quadrant four, the cos theta is positive. Uh, the angle for the sine theta and tangent theta are negative. So in conclusion, the first quadrant, all the angles are positive value. Quadrant 2, sine theta is positive. Quadrant 3, tangent theta is positive. And quadrant 4, the cos theta is positive. Okay, look at example 1. Given the sine 45 degrees equals to 0 0.7071, cos 45 degrees equals to 0 0.7071. So the first question A, the tangent 45. As you know that the tangent theta formula is equals to sine theta over cos theta. So we take the sine 45 degrees over the cos 45 degrees. So the value is equals to 1. Okay, for the B, cotangent 45 degrees. Okay, cotangent theta formula is equals to 1 over tangent theta. So, cotangent 45 degrees equals to 1 over tangent 45 degrees. So, 1 over tangent 45, we already get the answer from the first part A is equals to 1. So, 1 divided by 1 equals to 1. Okay, for the C, secant 45 degrees degrees okay secant theta equals to 1 over cos theta so secant 45 degrees equals to 1 over cos 45 degrees so equals to 1 over 0 0.7071 so the answer is 1.414 for the part d cosecant 45 degrees as we know that the cosecant theta is equals to 1 over sine theta so Cosecant 45 degrees equals to 1 over sine 45 degrees. So equals to 1 over 0 0.7071. So equals to 1.414. Now we look at the example 2. Example 2 is given sine 2 over 3 pi equals to 0 0.866. The cos 2 over 3 pi equals to negative 0 0.5. The part A tangent 2 over 3 pi so equals to sine 2 over 3 pi over cos 2 over 3 pi so you get the 0 0.866 divided by negative 0 0.5 so you get the negative 1.732 for the part b cotangent 2 over 3 pi is equals to 1 over tangent 2 over 3 pi that means we from the formula that the cotangent theta equals to 1 over tangent theta so equals to 1 over negative 1.732 so you will get the negative 0 0.5774 for the part d cosecant 2 over 3 pi equals to 1 over sine 2 over 3 pi that means that we take the formula from the cosecant theta equals to 1 over sine theta so equals to 1 over 0 0.866 so you get a 1.155 Okay, look at example 3. Example 3 is a question about the complementary angles. Okay, given the sine 52 degrees equals to P, cos 52 degrees equals to Q. 
So we want to find the value of each of the following trigonometry functions in terms of P and Q. Okay, the first part A, sine 38 degrees. Okay, as we know that the sine theta equals to cos bracket 90 degrees minus the theta. So that means from here, we take the cos 90 degrees minus the 38 degrees. So we get the cos 52 degrees. So uh, cos 55 degree, 52 degrees is equals to Q. Part B, second 38 degrees. Okay, secant theta equals to cosecant bracket 90 degrees minus the theta. So from this formula given, so we just take the formula, we take the cosecant 90 degrees minus the 38 degrees. So we get the cosecant 52 degrees. Again, cosecant theta equals to 1 over sine theta. So 1 over sine 52 degrees equals to 1 over P. For the part C, cotangent 38 degrees. As we know that the cotangent theta equals to tangent bracket 90 degrees minus the theta. So from here we have to take the tangent 90 degrees minus the 38 degrees. So we get the tangent 52 degrees degrees. So the tangent theta equals to sine theta over cos theta. So that means we just take the value of sine 52 degrees divided by cos 52 degrees, we get the P over Q.